Now that we have a simple working authentication system, let's go back and see how we can improve it. The biggest problem is that our passwords are stored in clear text. Now, obviously the passwords aren't visible to the user, but if someone were to be able to access our source code or look over our shoulder or get the source out of version control, they'd be able to see the passwords right there. Now that's pretty dangerous, we don't want to be handing out our password, so instead of storing the clear text password, we should store a cryptographic hash. A cryptographic hash is a function that takes an input and transforms it into an output. Now usually these outputs take the form of a fixed length of hexadecimal characters. What makes them useful is that one input will always give the same output. And you can't tell what the input is simply by looking at the output. And even if you change one little bit of the input, the output will be changed completely. You can't tell that two inputs are similar by just looking at the output. So what we can do is calculate the hash value for our passwords and store those hash values. Then when a password attempt is submitted, we can hash it, compare the outputs, and if they match, it's practically assured that the inputs were the same. Now, it's possible that two different inputs could have the same output, but the chances of that happening with two password length strings is astronomically small. Now, there are two different functions you can easily use for hashing in PHP, MD5 and SHA-1. These are named after the two hashing algorithms that they utilize. Now, MD5 is more widely used, but SHA-1 is going to be more secure and it has a larger output hash, thereby decreasing the probability of a collision between two different input values creating a common output. Now from a practical perspective, MD5 is secure enough, but if you have the choice between MD5 and SHA-1, why not go with SHA-1? Now let's look at how we can utilize this. Now I've created a script called hash.php. Now this script is just a utility for us in order to hash our passwords and we wouldn't necessarily want to expose this on our public website. It wouldn't be really harmful, but it does us no good. So it's just a utility script. And what it does is in the top of the page, it checks for a submitted password, and then it runs it through the MD5 function. I've included a few different types of hashing, and we'll go over the salted ones in a second. But if you want to use SHA-1, just uncomment this line, or if you want to use MD5, just use this line. So right now I'm just going to use an MD5 hash, and the rest of it just shows the result, if there is one, and a form. So going to our hash page, we can see it just has a simple password. Now if I type in admin pass and click go, we can see that the result of that is this string right here. Now if I type it again, admin pass, it'll always give us the same result. And that's what makes a hashing function useful. Now if I were to say admin passed with a T, you can see just by changing one letter, it's a completely different hash. Now I'm going to go back to the code and I'm going to change it so we're using a SHA-1 hash because I prefer using SHA-1. So I'm just going to uncomment the SHA-1 line and I'm going to rehash our password with SHA-1. So I'm going to say admin pass and you can see it's slightly longer because SHA-1 produces a longer output. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we'll go to our auth.php and instead of admin pass, we're going to put the password value here. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for Jim's pass. And we can take this value and replace this password. So that's part one. We've hashed the passwords that are stored for us. Now we actually have to modify our credentials valid function to hash the requested password before comparing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace this because we're getting a little more complicated. We're going to build it out a little bit more. And here we're doing the same check as we did before of users of username being set. If it is, then we get the hash submitted password by calling the SHA-1 function on our password. We can get the correct hash password by just looking up the users of username since we've already hashed them in the array. And finally, we return that hash submitted equals hash correct. If they do not match, then they're not the same password and the credentials are invalid. Now, if the username is not found, we will return false. So let's go to our page and we will try to log in admin and using our admin pass. And you can see that we've successfully logged in. Hashing is a great first step, but you can secure your passwords even more with a little bit of salt. Since hashing passwords is a popular way to secure data, if your password hashes are compromised, 
it still is possible that an attacker could figure out your password. This is because attackers can hash commonly used passwords or even exhaustive lists of random characters, and they can create a lookup of those hashes to the passwords. These tables are known as rainbow tables, and many have been pre-generated over large swaths of possible passwords. Now, what we can do to protect against this is consistently prepend some string, or salt, to our passwords before encoding them. So if we prepend a string like toaster before our passwords, our hash will be different than if we just use a normal function on our passwords, because in essence we have changed the hashing algorithm. Now if an attacker knows the hash, they could generate new tables that included our salt, but generating those tables takes an incredible amount of time and resources compared to just using a pre-generated one. For added security, you could generate a unique salt for each user, thereby making it difficult to attack multiple users on your site should your salts be compromised. So let's look at how we could implement that. First, in our lookup function, we're going to create a salt. Now here I've created, you know, some real words, some junk. We want it to be fairly long and fairly random. If it's only a couple letters, then there's a chance that the pre-generated rainbow tables might contain your salt plus your password, and then somebody could figure it out. If they're fairly long, the longer and more random the better they are, the more they're going to be resistant to attacks. So we just take this salt, and before we hash our password, we prepend it to our password. So we're going to say salt, and then prepend, and then, and then concatenate to our password. So now these passwords will no longer match now that we've salted it, so we do have to regenerate our passwords here. Now this is important because if you change your salt, all of your password hashes will be invalid, so you must keep your salt safe, Otherwise, you're going to not be able to let your users log in without regenerating all of their passwords. So we're going to keep this safe, and we're going to save this out. And let's go back to our generator, our hash.php. And let's go ahead and comment out our result with no salt. And instead, uncomment the salted SHA-1. So you can see here, we've done the same thing. We've prepended salt to our password and I've made sure to use the exact same salt over here that we are in our auth.php. And that's important because a different salt will return a different end value. So let's go to our hash generator and we'll just type in admin pass to create our admin one. So going back to auth.php, we're going to replace our value and you can see that it's changed. And I've also changed the gym password as well. So let's go to our page, we will log out and we'll see if we can still log in. Admin, and then admin pass, and it still works. So you can see now we have a much more secure page here. If someone were to see our source code, they wouldn't be able to tell that the actual password to get in was admin pass, or Jim's pass in this case. In upcoming videos, we'll build a more robust database-backed user system for our authentication system. Mm -hmm.